Welcome to First United Methodist Church in Bristol, Tennessee. First of all, a belated happy Juneteenth. Also, happy Father's Day to all of the dads here. And also, Good morning. Good morning. That's, that's not a bad response for a Sunday morning. I mean, it is, you know, 11 o'clock. I mean, so we ought to be bright-eyed and bushy-tailed by this point in the morning. This is fine, fine. I'll take it. I offer you all a word of, uh, of warning last week that this summer we'd be walking through the entire story of uh, David, King David. Today is the second week, and so I want to offer to us what is probably a very familiar story. And so I hope that uh, that this is, Melissa, I specifically warned you about the rocking of this microphone stand, and I just kicked it myself. So, brilliant. I'm not quite awake either. I want to invite you to receive this story with, with fresh ears, see if there's something that that the story is saying to you, that God's Spirit is saying to you, that's a little different from what you've heard of. I read it from 1 Samuel. We start with a quote, and so I'm going to offer just a little bit of background. We have the story of David and this monster of a person coming up to the Israelite lines. We find David in conversation with Saul very early on. David says, don't let anyone lose courage because of this Philistine, David told Saul. I, your servant, will go out and fight him. You can't fight this Philistine, Saul answered David. You're still a boy, but he's been a warrior since he was a boy. Your servant has kept his father's sheep, David replied to Saul. And if ever a lion or a bear came and carried off one of them, I would go after it, strike it, rescue the animal from its mouth. If it turned on me, I'd grab at its jaw, strike it, and kill it. Your servant has fought both lions and bears. This uncircumcised Philistine will be just like one of them because he has insulted the army of the living God. The Lord, David added, who rescued me from both the power of lions and bears will rescue me from the power of this Philistine. Go, Saul replied to David, and may the Lord be with you. Then Saul dressed David in his own gear, putting a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. David strapped his sword on over the armor, but he couldn't walk around well because he never tried it before. I can't walk in this, David told Saul, because I've never tried it before. So he took off. He then grabbed his staff and chose five smooth stones from the street bed. He put them in the pocket of his shepherd's bag and with a sling in hand, went out to the Philistine. Well, the Philistine got closer and closer to David, and his shield bearer was in front of him. When the Philistine looked David over, he sneered at David because he was just a boy, reddish brown and good looking. The Philistine asked David, am I some sort of dog? Then you come at me with sticks. And he cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said to David, and I'll feed your flesh to the wild birds and the wild animals. But David told the Philistine, You are coming against me with sword, spear, and scimitar, but I come against you in the name of the Lord of heavenly forces, the God of Israel's army, the one you've insulted. Today, 
the Lord will hand you over to me. I will cut you down and strike off your head. No, I will strike you down and cut off your head. I should read the words on the page. Today, I will feed your dead body and the dead bodies of the entire Philistine camp to the wild birds and the wild animals. Then the whole world will know that there is a God on Israel's side. And all those gathered here will know that the Lord doesn't save by means of sword and spear. The Lord owns this war and will hand all of you over to us. The Philistine got up and moved closer to attack David. And David ran quickly to the front line to face him. David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone. He slung it and it hit the Philistine on the forehead. The stone penetrated his forehead and he fell face down on the ground. Good morning, everyone. I wonder from that passage if that's where the phrase lions, tigers, and bears came from. <laughs> Just something to think about. All right, if you would please put on your masks and 
want to invite us into a time of prayer this morning. And we will share uh, in prayer. I will open us up with the collect of the day, the collect for proper seven, which this year is the, I've already lost track. Is this the sixth week after Pentecost? No, it's the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. But I'll open us up with the collect of the day and then uh, invite us into a time of quietness and reflection. As during that time, God is laying concerns or joys on your heart, I invite you to lift them up to God, either in your heart or with your voice. And if you are joining us online this morning, I invite you to, uh, to share those concerns with us on our Facebook feed. And if at any time you have a concern that you need me to pray over during the week, I with the exception of last week, do that on a daily basis. I celebrate morning prayer somewhere in the 8 o'clock hour uh, every day during the week. And I do my best to lift up those concerns every day. After a time of sharing and, and contemplation, I will uh, invite us to share together the Lord's Prayer. Friends, let's pray. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. For you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Friends, as Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, Melissa Wright is one of our...
newest members here at first. Oh, 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 I'm skipping over something again. I'm so sorry. This is what I do. I miss things and I get in the way. Excellent. I'm going to shut my mouth and let Phil and Betty bless us this morning. You know, that's part of the joy of live things going on. You know, we're not perfect. We never <laughs> pretended to be. Uh, anyone who's perfect, I'm not so sure this is the place for you. You know, you know we're all perfect in our own way. And uh, we have the ability to be able to laugh at ourselves, go according to plan, and also laugh at ourselves when they don't go according to plan. So, you know. Hey, it's all all fun and love. This morning, uh, with the accompaniment of Betty Curtis, I'd like to present to you Praise the Lord with the Sound of Trumpet by Natalie Sleeth. With the sound of trumpet, praise the Lord with the harp and lute. Praise the Lord with the gentle sounding flute. Praise the Lord in the field and forest. Praise the Lord in the city square. Praise the Lord any time and anywhere. Praise the Lord in the wind and sunshine. Praise the Lord in the dark of night. Praise the Lord in the rain or snow or in the morning light. Praise the Lord in the deepest valley. Praise the Lord on the highest hill. Praise the Lord, never let your voice be still. Praise the Lord with the crashing cymbal. Praise the Lord with the pipe and string. Praise the Lord with the joyful songs you sing. Praise the Lord on a weekday morning. Praise the Lord on a Sunday noon. Praise the Lord by the light of sun or moon. Praise the Lord in the time of sorrow. Praise the Lord in the time of joy. Praise the Lord every moment, nothing let your praise destroy. Praise the Lord in the peace and quiet. Praise the Lord in your work or play. Praise the Lord everywhere in every way. Excellent. As I was saying, Melissa Wright is one of our newest members here at uh, First United Methodist Church, and she recently uh, decided that she was going to go ahead and do like all the lay servant training all at once, uh, and which is really exciting, and, and well, especially to me. I, we don't have very many people, <clears throat> hint, hint, who get very excited about training to be a lay servant, which has many different avenues, but it's a fantastic opportunity even if you never really take advantage of it. But Melissa wants to take advantage of it, and so I wanted to give her this opportunity to share with you her story and to share with you her first experience, I guess, in the pulpit as, as a lay speaker. So welcome, Melissa Wright, friends.
Good morning, all. Good morning. Thank you for having me speak my story this morning. The story of me and what brought me to First United might seem a bit off. I'll be purposely telling my story in reverse chronological order. I have a specific reason for this that you will understand at the end. I first came to First United to speak with Brandon on April or in April of 2019 and in a fairly emotional state. He assured me that I would be accepted and shown a great deal of care, concern, and love. I came for most of Holy Week and again was fairly emotional. I was not able to return to First United till about August because of my work schedule, but I needed First United and the family I feel I've made here. You see, on April 2nd, 2019, my best friend, my heart sister, my big sis, Christy, died. I was not present and there for her and her family when she died. And I feel that that was part of God's grace to me, knowing what a struggle that would have been. She had her demons that I tried to help her fight. Her demons were alcohol and mental illness. Her ultimate cause of death was acetaminophen intoxication. The last time I saw her was near the end of January when I drove her to Charlottesville for what was supposed to have been a 12 to 18 month stay in a sober living house. She means the world to me. I still feel her presence as my guardian angel at times, such as in church the Sunday before I had my scheduled bone marrow biopsy. I felt her hug me in church and hug me during my biopsy. I would do almost anything that she needed as the Lord had brought us together to be there for and to help each other. You may ask, what is a heart sister? Well, I'll tell you, we're not sisters by natural birth, but by sis but sisters through our love. How I pray I'll be a blessing to you and display God's kind of love. I want to encourage you day by day by the little things I say and do. For you're a special sister and my heart goes out to you. She was so very proud of me, looked up to me and admired me. While she was a little younger than me because of who I am, which you will learn momentarily, I saw her as my big sister and she saw me as her little sister. And boy, when it came to protecting her as the Lord led me to, I was am indefinitely a feisty little sister. When she would fall in her attempt at recovery, she would apologize and was always afraid I would judge her. I never judged her because I knew she was beating herself up enough, was feeling self-judged, and most importantly, it is not my place to judge as we learn from Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 5. Don't judge so that you won't be judged. You'll receive the same judgment you give. Why do you see this splinter that's in your brother's or sister's eye, but don't see but don't notice the log in your own eye. How can you say to your brother or sister, let me take the splinter out of your eye when there's a log in your own eye? You deceive yourself. First, take the log out of your eye. Then you'll see clearly to take the splinter out of your brother's or sister's eye. The Lord brought her into my life towards the end of 2013 and the beginning of 2014. The Lord knew I needed a best friend and she would need a best friend. We met at work. I had only been back to work a few short months and was still recovering from major surgery. There were many people at work who would treat me one way when I was around, but they would talk about me behind my back 
when I was not around. If Christy was around them at these times, she defended me. She defended me so well, I actually had to prevent her or keep her from giving my first gynecologist peace of her mind because of something my gynecologist said, and Christy heard it. Christy also got very upset when my first gynecologist dismissed some symptoms I was experiencing. Christy was my defender, protector, teacher, and mentor. She was my big sister. You see, the major surgery I had is known by several names, but I prefer the name gender confirmation surgery. I am a post-op trans woman. My viewing Christy as my big sister is I realized that I was essentially going through my teen years again, having to learn what it meant to be female. When Christy came into my life, I was feeling lonely as my previous best friend had disappeared back in May after my return from Montreal. Granted, I am one of the strongest, most driven women you will ever meet. I still needed girlfriends and sisters though. My cousin and his wife drove down from their home in Maryland to take me back to their place in Maryland so that they could get me to Dulles Airport for my flight to Montreal. And you see, I flew for the first time, left the country for the first time, had major surgery in a foreign country, and did all of these things by myself. My aunt provided my housing when I got back to Maryland and one of my friends from work could drive up to bring me home. Because I believe so deeply in education and know that the only way of under to understanding is for there to be open communication. I want you all to know that you can ask me anything about my experiences and story to help with understanding. And Brandon has my open permission to share my contact information. <laughs> my desire in coming to First United has been to grow a family, hopefully gain some sisters and brothers, maybe meet a great Christian man, and to grow in my faith and relationship with the Lord. I want to grow in my understanding of not only the Bible, but also heaven, life, and death. Thank you. Thank you so much, Melissa, for sharing with us. If you would, please put on your masks and turn in your hymnal to selection 377. Let's stand and sing, It Is Well With My Soul. like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well with my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul, though say should buffet, though trial should come, let this blessing 
blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and hath shed his own blood for my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. It is well, it is well, it is well, it is well with my soul. And Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound and the Lord shall descend. Even so it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Friends, go from here. A people who know full well that God's love is big enough for you. Go from here confident in God's grace. Though you may feel like David, with God's power, there is no Goliath too big. Go and share the embracing, inclusive, welcoming love of God everywhere you go. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.